world, we are here. I'm Gerard Square PC, and I have the pleasure and the privilege to be here in Palm Springs at the Davines North America Gathering, which is an incredible gathering of educators that uh, work with Davines all over North America. And I'm here with one of the main men here who's been sharing with all those 200 educators, Mr. Pedro Enchenko, who is one of the owners of Alalon Education in Ennis Salon in London. He's going to be doing a beautiful haircut on Annalise, Ana Luisa, si. who's a beautiful <laughs> hairdresser from Victoria in Canada, originally from Mexico though, right? Yes. She's here actually as a student, um, and Pedro roped her in to get this incredible creative haircut. He's gonna keep it long, rockerish, but something modern. Take it away, Pedro, and see if already started with your guideline. Definitely. It's great to be here, guys. You know, an amazing venue, like Gerard was saying. You know, Devin has putting on a, a really special event for all of us. Um, I've met Ana Luisa a few times. I met her in London recently, and um, you know, she, you know, was quite up for me. You know, she heard about the Facebook Live and the, the Hair Brain Live, and we were just like, yeah, let's do it. So, started on the top, and um, I've chosen to work a layering technique in this zone, and I'm just working with the roundness of the head. So, those of you who know my business partner and best friend Johnny, you know, know he's been doing a lot of these Facebook lives recently. He's done a, a few for Hairbrand as well. Yes, he, he has. Been been in New York a, a real, a real pleasure to work with Johnny, such a brilliant educator. I know you guys have an incredible history together. Mm. We want to hear about that. Uh, but so technically, if you're starting right, it's an unusual place for people to start a haircut. Definitely. Definitely. Tell us what, why. And, and probably an unusual way to approach layering as well. A lot of people approach layering in, in a vertical section. I'm approaching it in a horizontal manner. Um, I just feel when you're working creatively, as I'm going to be doing, we'll be showing you today, sometimes working slightly unorthodox helps you approach your zoning a little bit better. So I'm working with one, two, three, four, five different zones. So working first a lot parallel with the, the top triangular zones enables me to work cleaner and more precise. If I was to work vertically with a layering technique through there, I would always be kind of like trying to get away from damaging that section there. Where if I just run a section all the way along it, understand my elevation and over direction, understand what shape I'm creating, then I'm in control. So a lot of pre-sectioning went into this and, you know, Pedro was working here for a few minutes looking at the head shape, moving around. Um, and I noticed you have a very, at Alalon, you guys have created a language. Definitely. And you call these sections or segments, you call them zones. Correct. Tell us a little bit about why. Um, it's just, you know, like we, me and Johnny were very lucky, very fortunate. You know, we had an amazing apprenticeship, you know, just as I'm sure Gerard could agree. You know, we, we all worked at Sassoon's um, together and... You know, we, mm -hmm. we left being very privileged with a, a language and a philosophy, but, you know, something that me and Johnny were very passionate about from the beginning is to not necessarily um, stay where we were, you know, in terms of the language. We wanted to kind of say, okay, we've learned it, we're grateful for it, let's throw all the cards up in the air and let's try and rebuild it, you know. And so we sit down with our team on a regular basis and we talk about the language. You know, sometimes we find ourselves arguing over a word. It's very <laughs> passionate. We've uh, we spent lots of time doing that with yeah. different groups of people I've worked with. That's when you're so passionate about something. You create your own language. No, you know. argue over the definitions. It's exactly, that's the, exactly. the craft and the art, like living at full force. You know, just like that old school um, terminology of one length. You know, that one length language. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm. You know, it's an inherited. But is it really logical? Yeah. 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 Is an, it the an, best description? It's an inherited language, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so. We have a choice, you know, we have a choice whether we keep using an inherited language or we try to kind of, you know, rewrite it. Move the technology it. forward. Yeah. And so I want to give a few shout outs. We have a lot of our, our diehard friends and fans watching. Frank Mussolino, what's up? My best friend Nick Guinness is watching. Hey, Adrena M. Art, who's a, a great supporter of Hairbrain. Thank you. Lots of love for Alalon and Pedro. My good friend Nicole is watching. We haven't seen Nicole watch in a while. Great to see you there. Joe Gilbert, uh, he says, what's up, Pedro? Yes, Joe. Um, and again, guys, of course, we want to encourage questions. Pedro is not only an incredible hair cutter and a salon owner and a brand representative for Davines, but he's an incredible teacher and educator. So this is a great time for questions. I'll be fielding the questions right here. Um, if you want to recap for people yeah, just definitely. joining, because the numbers are starting to okay, go so up, what happened Let's here? show you my zones first, okay? So if we look at this top zone, so we started off in a slight point, just around the crown area. We arced to just on top of the ear on the right-hand side, and then we came back up into the recession area. 
All right, on the other side, it's just pretty much a straight line from that point to recession, all right? So it's a kind of funky little triangle on top, yeah? On the right-hand side, I have another zone which sits just in front of the ear. With this, with this zone, what I did prior to getting on camp online, just slightly layered it, shorter internally, longer externally, so a triangular layer, all right? And I just worked on the base. On the base for us, as a language, we use the cutting by numbers, which is one to two, two to three, three to four, all right? So everything is round horizontally, but triangular vertically. Then this zone that you saw me start with, I started from the point of that triangle on top, and I took a, the zone to the top of the ear. All right, so it's another triangle in there. I started with horizontal sections. I cut three sections, one, two, three on the base, so one to two, two to three, and then I turned my sections into a vertical sections, and I then used my cutting angle and my elevation to create the length that I wanted externally. All right, so I continued that all the way through to the front, and it basically it's given me that length through the face, but it's also given me the ability to remove weight in this area. So now I'm on, I'm on my final two zones. So these two zones here, if we just have a look, they've been separated by the point of that, that disconnection again, a slight diagonal coming across to the right hand side of the nape. Now I'm going to work in this zone, slightly more, uh, more of a, a, a graduated feeling, and on the other zone behind the left ear, more of a layered feeling. But I'm also going to be leaving like tendrils of length the external shape so nothing's going to feel you know and Annalisa was really open she was kind of like yeah just you know do what you want you know she, her initial thoughts were you know I'm, I want to keep a little bit of length you know I would like a, a feeling of femininity so I could have I could have encouraged her definitely to maybe kind of work something kind of shorter and more compact but I thought why she's got this length you know why not kind of try and experiment it's so it. great to have those extremes too mm -hmm. I think you know um, to have that extreme of short and long, it just gives so much more movement and versatility, but in, in a creative, unique way. I love all these different zones, as you call them, or some people call them panels. Um, they've all got a different but very distinct technique and shape within them, yeah. and they all have to come together harmoniously. Okay. So we do have a question coming in for our buddy Joe Gilbert, yes, um, and I, I think he's referring to like when you start your guidelines in these kind of. How do you determine the length of? you know, what the guideline is going to be. Thanks for the question, Joe. Again, okay, guys, all your questions. Joel, I think it's the Joel Gilbert I know. I yeah, it came, is. He came to London recently, done, done a course with us. Uh, amazing guy, you know, really passionate about education. Shares a lot of great stuff yeah, on it. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He, does, he does. Okay, so, great question, Joel. I'm just going to pop this section in, and I'm going to get back on that. So I'm going to use this as a guide, just there. Yeah, so that's from my first zone. And I'm going to, I've, if you see here, I've just zoned off, I've just cut this zone in half. So this is going to be my tendril of length. So I'm going to just connect the top of this zone all the way through. All right, so I'm going to use that guide. So Joel's question, how do you choose? I mean, it's a really, it's a really tricky one. I don't know if you remember, Gerard, but beginning of your career. I'm 22 years or 26 years mm -hmm. in, yeah? So it's kind of like, I used to ask a question uh, in my head when I, was, when I was that young. And it was like, well, how do you know? You know, like when you're, even when you're cutting something so simple as a line, you know, something pure, you know, it's like, how do you know what length to choose? You know, and it's, I found it really frustrating because I was one of the, I was the one answer of these, is experience. <laughs> I, was one, I was one of these kids who was like, I just, everything was why, yeah. you know, why dad, why, why dad, yeah. you know, and that's, the, and that's the same thing. And there wasn't an answer. And the answer is basically, you know, suitability. More, yeah, no, the more, the more haircuts you get under your belt. Experience. Yeah, exactly what Gerald said. The more Intuition. haircuts you get under your belt the more you realize and you can react and respond to certain textures because what might be the right length in this scenario will be the wrong length in another scenario because every human being that sits in your chair is different. You well, know, so we got a lot of love coming in. We got one bad hombre watching us, our buddy Hector Rodriguez. What's yeah. up, Hector? To Always ride. a pleasure, he's loving it. He knows he's my bad hombre. We've <laughs> got our buddy Jason Hunt watching. I think yes, you guys Jason. are all friends. And uh, Patty and Hope Harris as well. Patty, Gina, thanks guys for watching. Uh, lots of love coming in for you. How beautiful you are, Ana Luisa. <laughs> Very much Cooley so. Yeah. This model is crazy beautiful. She could wear anything. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Jason Hunt is, is really uh, good friends with uh, Ana Luisa. Hi, Jason. Well, <laughs> You know, it's been very supportive in a new project. She's recently opened a new salon, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I, um, he was mentoring me for a while, so he inspired me to open a hair salon. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah, in Vancouver, so 
Working on that. Very exciting. Amazing. And Anna Louisa, tell us a little bit about your experience here. So for those of you that are just joining us, we're here at, it's called The Gathering. It's the Davines North America kind of education retreat. There's about 200 educators here from all over North America. Um, and they're taking different trainings with our buddy Joseph DiMaggio, who's here. We'll probably have him pop in and say hello with Pedro and his team, Christine Zielinski, uh, some of these incredible colorists that are running through. Um, and Anna, Anna Louise is taking the classes. So what's that like for you? It's Talk really, loud. It's amazing. It's really exciting. Um, today my class was with Joseph, and it was all about blow drying and our techniques and our body positioning and really focusing on how to polish the hair properly and to deliver the best blow dry. So it was really, really fun. It was a couple of hours of hard work on one blow dry. Um, but, you know, we learned immensely. Uh, this is the second gathering that happens in the past. Did you come, did you come to the first one? Yes, I came I to the first one. Um, I'm part of the regional artistic team for Davenex. Mm. And it's been four years now, so... It's really exciting that we get this opportunity to, you know, have the best of the best teach us, right? Awesome. Thank you so much and Thank glad you. you're having an amazing experience. Let's get back because Pedro's really in it now. He's got the stance going on. <laughs> Tell us it's exactly. The so are so you're, you're graduating this area exactly. just right over this disconnected veil exactly. here on the, exactly. on the edge. Sure. Tell I've us used, about it. I've used that area as a connection point and now I'm just controlling uh, the sh my horizontal shape. I'm controlling it with a cutting line in my over direction. So I'm ensuring that the hair is going to its natural position. So I'm looking at the root. I think this is one of the best advice I could give you. Yeah, You need to focus on what's happening at the root. That will di dictate what's give uh, what your elevation is, but it also dictate what your over direction is. So I want my, sh my horizontal shape to be round. So therefore, when I'm looking at that root, I'm ensuring that my body is moving towards my chest and I'm moving around with it. So I want to create a round shape horizontally. So vertically, that is being controlled by my elevation. All right, so if I want that shape to be quite flat, then I have to lift. If I want that shape to be quite heavy, then I have to be careful and pull it down. Yeah, build the you know? weight or flatten it up. So you did an amazing job. You must be reading the questions as they're coming in because we had a question from Michelle uh, Galvin Holman about elevation, which I think you really touched on. Frank Mussolino was asking us, are you building weight, which you definitely are, yes. but, but you're adjusting it, making sure it doesn't get too heavy. You don't want a blunt weight line or anything like that. You want a nice contoured, I think you said kind of like a head hugging type of shape. Yeah, I think I was, when I was teaching the students today, we were, we were, I was using a graduation in a certain zone. And um, you know, I think a lot of people struggle you know, with elevation. I think elevation is like the, the, hairdresser's, <laughs> the hairdresser's nightmare. And I think how they avoid it is they work all of their sections vertically. Sure, and they you cut know? the angle in yeah. rather than building exactly. the shape. Do you remember that old in the cut? Do you, do you know the original cutting book where it had like 40 pages oh, about yeah. concave? The Bible. And it was cutting the <laughs> angle in versus over-directing the angle in. We yeah. talk about it a lot. And the concave was in the back of the head right here. No. Yeah, both Pedro and I are very fortunate that we you know, started off with a fantastic Great training at Sassoon's. Sassoon's. Now, you guys have carried that on yourself because you have a salon uh, in London, a beautiful salon. I've been there, a beautiful townhouse. These guys, I don't know how you made such a beautiful space, but it's like if I could move into a salon, that would be the one. It's called Anna, it's in London. That's correct. And then they also have a training facility there, and that's this training part of the business, which is called Alalon. And it's all kind of in a partnership with Davenez. So let's just talk about that briefly, and then we'll get right back to the technique. So what? how long have you guys been working with Davenez? What's the relationship like? It's been fixed since the very beginning of Anna and Alalon, to be fair. You know, it's like we're really fortunate. We just, I think, like-minded people tend to gravitate towards each other. You the lighting's a little funny here. You know, it's just, it's just the way life is in general. You know, and we were saying when life know, goes well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we were saying with the guys, you know, like um, a few of the guys, Anna Pachito and Sam with Missouri, were just demonstrating in one of the um, exhibitions that we just had, and they were just saying, you know, like. They feel like everyone they come in contact with, you know, has the same spirit, you know, and I think that's what happens. I think when, you know, when ourselves, we came in contact with Davin, it just felt right, just fitted, you know, and we just uh, wanted, you know, to be, you know, associated with them. We felt proud to be associated with them, and we still do to this day, and, and vice versa, you know. So, do you want to spin around from me? I need to get a better light now. Yeah. Okay, yep. let's get back into this incredible technique. But before we do, Jason Hunt wants to make sure that he sends his best to you. I love you, Jason. Yeah. Okay, so 
That was my graduated side. You can see I've built up a slightly head-hugging shape, you know, slightly triangular vertically, round horizontally. Um, now this is going to be more of a layered shape. So I'm going to get all of this hair out of the way. Thank you, Madi RD, for sharing this. Everyone else that's watching, if you wouldn't mind hitting that share button, it's in the bottom left corner of the screen. We want to share this with as many craft hairdressers as we can around the world. Great experience, beautiful model, beautiful haircut, and Pedro doing this incredible education. And just a secret, this beautiful model, her parents are here watching. Let's see. Let's give a shout out to the parents. All the way from Mexico, here at Palm Springs. All right, let's get back to that haircut. Okay, so I'm just zapping off. No pressure having the mum and dad in the audience. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> okay, so are you going to propose? <laughs> I've got, yeah, yeah. Don't think my wife would like that. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got this area underneath that I've zoned away, that again, to maintain the tendrils of length. Now I'm going to start to work up the head. And I'm going to work shorter, closer to my graduation and longer, closer to the back of the ear. All right, let's see what I've got. Let's go. You can see how I can. The long bit of ones behind the ear. Just twisting that over. Thanks for sharing. Lots of people hit that share button. And Patty Gibbons has a very important question. Is it hot enough for us? Oof. Guys, is it hot enough? Oof. Yeah. yeah. Hot enough. It was 120 <laughs> degrees yesterday. My brain fried. I was outside. We did a photo shoot with our buddy Sal Maziri and Anna Pacito. We went out to the desert, 120 degrees. Back to the technique, because this looks like a really okay. important moment. So I'm just, just, just trying to get a good spot elevating, here. Elevating, twisting, shorter to longer. All right, just Swinging that around, boom, there it is. All right, getting rid of all that excess. All right, and I'm, I'm elevating high each time, yeah? So I don't want to create any weight lines. Like I, like, like I created a weight line on this side, this side's going to be more weightless. So really transitioning from that graduation into a higher elevation, would you consider this to be a layered side? Exactly, so yeah. I want this to be slimmer and more, you know, the silhouette just to be a little bit more collapsed, where the other side I want it to just kind of um, give it a bit of head shape. I've noticed that about the, the Aulan aesthetic, that there's a lot of tilted and twisted balances. Yeah, we, it's a bit like our personality. <laughs> tilted and twisted. <laughs> it's actually so untrue. This guy and Johnny are the no, nicest, no, no. friendliest no. guys ever. We're it's, damaged. We're yeah. damaged. I, I don't think so. I think you're probably two of the most balanced hairdressers I've ever met. Nice family man and, you know, very polite. Uh, but yes, your work is more twisted, so maybe there is a dark side. There, there, there is when it comes to our, our kind of passion to hair. You know, it's only the other day that if you get me, Johnny, and all of the edu Alan educators in a room and we start talking. I think we just got some of them start, in the room. We start, we, start, in. we start talking about hair, it, trust me, it gets, it gets heated, you know, and every, it's, it's, we always say it's passion, you know, because we're all so passionate about what we do. But we can argue over a word. You know, for hours. That's what sets our craft apart, you know, I mean, uh, and you know, we all have clients that do all kinds of things, and a lot of them like their work and love their work, but very few of them get together with their coworkers and, and talk more about their work. They just yeah. kind of move on, you know, but I think when you work with your hands, you, you carry it with you all the time. Yeah. You can't put it down. I mean, working with your brain or your heart or whatever, your eyes, but when you do something with your hands, your hands are always kind of sparking that conversation. Uh -huh. Right, so it's moving along now. Let's get back yeah, into so the I'm just traveling all the way up the head through this last zone. And again, I'm just elevating up, really to create that softness, and then I'm just doing that little twist. All right, so it's shorter, closer to the graduation. And then just twisting. So as we've been uh, mentioning, uh, we're here in Palm Springs at the Ace Hotel. The whole place is kind of rented out with Davines educators. You can see a few of them just came in off the pool. Say hi, guys. Hi. Say I love Davines. <laughs> <laughs> right on. You can see some shots of the pool there. Um, and they're all here to work with some of um, Davines' top artists and educators. One of, the, one of them just walked in the room, Mr. Joseph DiMaggio. He's been here doing the blow-dry classes. And yep. what, what, what's been happening in the blow-dry classes? The magic. Um, we've been sealing the cuticle. Sealing it, closing it down. Yeah, Put the elbows down. Elbows in. Elbows in. Wrists are straight. Wrists are straight. Looks like he's riding a chopper. Yeah. Right. yeah. But yeah, nice I mean, what, what this guy's done here is he's turned kind of 
I think something that many of us take for granted into a science, I got to sit in the class for an hour yesterday, and there was so much technique into just understanding what you're doing to one section, the blow dryer, the brush, the use of product. And I think, again, that's elevating it to an art and taking it out there. So, Joseph, thank you so thank much you so for much. sharing and being here. Let's get back into Pedro's technique. I'm going to be using uh, Joseph's uh, hair dryer for the first time today. I'm really excited about it. Booyaka! Boom. <laughs> I got you, bro. Thank you. All right, so, again, just working through, just continuing up. Shorter. If you look at that length there, in relationship to the graduation, the graduation probably sits about that length. So I want, I'm conscious to, to ensure that there's a difference in length through this centre point. All right. So just giving some shout outs, our buddy Tony Sadiq, who's a big supporter of education. Yes. He's giving shout outs to everyone. Uh, there was someone from Thailand. Uh, May Sayum Porn says yes. hello, Joseph. When are you coming back to Thailand? Whenever, <laughs> Whenever you invite me, and I'm happy to come too. I'm happy to come. Daniel Green, yeah. radically curly, was on also earlier. Yeah, hello, uh, Danielle. So many friends. Thank you for your support and thank you for spreading this. I had a great opportunity to talk to these educators for 15 minutes tonight and just really talk to them about the power of video and that this is really something that's going to change our industry. This is a huge disruption. Um, and we can all capitalize on it by sharing, by connecting each other and bringing everyone closer together. And that's what this is all about. Let's get back into what's happening now on the second side. All right, so I'm just coming through. It's probably got about two more sections left. I'm just elevating up. Just working a shorter internal shape and just twisting and really exaggerating that length. So you kind of manipulate the guide as you cut. Yeah, definitely. You move it around. I mean, you know, when we learn real basic classic haircutting, we kind of learn to be real structured and be careful not to manipulate it. But as you get more organic and creative, you kind of can change it as you're cutting it, yeah? No, 100%, 100%. I think once you really understand how to kind of, you know, understand when, when you cut hair in a certain position, you elevate hair to a certain place, you know, you can really... <coughs> You know, start to manipulate things a little bit better. Okay, so I think this is the last one. I think I've got a little long piece just in there. I just try and find it. As you check through there, I have. I, I don't know if I if I tagged you in this, but I think it was Andy Gilbert shared a photo from yeah. 1998 oh, yeah. on the church steps for Christmas. Yes. And I, you know, I we've obviously met each other and become friends since then. But at that time, I didn't even know we were both in the same photo. It's yeah. incredible. I'll post it later on Facebook. I, I was a bit upside down in that photo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was Disclaimer. Like, but it's amazing because I look through it, and obviously some of those people in 1998, London, Sassoon, I remembered. And then some of them like, wow, these people have really come into my life. It's like what you were saying before. We've yeah. all kind of come together to do great and, and incredible things. It's, it's interesting, isn't it, Gerard? You were, at the time, we would never have known. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, you know that was a, an, an era that was quite significant, I think. And I think it's, it's a bit one of, them, one of them things. It's when you're in it, you know, at the time, you just don't really understand you know, what, you're, what you're lucky to be a part of. So I've got a little longer piece there. Let me just find that bad boy. Where are you hiding? Excellent. So just checking through kind of these last sections and then you've just got this one left on the exactly. top. Exactly. Then I'm done. Excellent. So you just kind of work through section by section. Like I, I always, when I think of this, I think of like modular, like, you know, furniture where you can move the components around. Yeah. Um, and I, that's very fitting because we're in like the mid-century modern capital of, of the world, Palm Springs, where there's a lot of modular furniture from that like 50s era. Um, and I think it's a big part of design. It, it's all these different pieces that come together to form one cohesive look, um, which I think is, makes it really, really incredible. So again, lots of love coming in. Here's a question from Deb Burke. Do you always um, move your client's head around as you work, and, and why? Um, I think it's important. I think it's impo important for posture. I think we're in the industry for you know a lifetime. You know, so a client that sits in the chair is only there for half an hour, 60 minutes. You know, so therefore, you really need to manipulate their posi head position to be able to make your posture Get better access. Yeah, yeah. You know, so don't feel. Body. I think at the point, in my beginning of the career, it was always 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 thought that you should respect the client and try and you know you know move them too much. But the, the older I get, the more I realise that that information wasn't necessarily correct. Well, and I also think you know, as a hairdresser, if you learn to make your touch actually soothing, yes. people like it. No, definitely. You know, to have their head moved and directed, but that's all established in the consultation, in the shampoo, exactly. if you do any type of stress relieving massage beforehand, um, and, and it can actually become a time where 
Because how often do people let someone walk up to them and touch, touch their them. head? Not often. So yeah. when you get that permission, it's like someone's opened up to you. So you can really make it special and make the touch feel incredible. All right, so we're getting up to the top. What's happening now? Do me a favor, then, and just spin around the other way, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Yeah, we have the uh, best look. props here, the best, uh, <laughs> the best in, in furniture. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do now is this last triangle on top. I'm just going to put a little shape in there, and it's going to be slightly triangular, all right? So I want to maintain some, some length. So when you say triangular, you mean kind of shorter at the crown, getting exactly. gradually, incrementally exactly. longer towards the and front. My choice of length is long enough to kind of give that shorter hair that I've kind of some kind of coverage, all right? So I'm not connecting it with the shortest point in the crown from the other zones. I'm actually creating a completely new guide, which is going to be long enough to give me some uh, longer areas of length hanging over them shorter areas. So I have lots of questions about what you've been spraying in the hair. This definitely. is the, the Day Day Hair Mist. Well, as Can you tell us a little bit about yeah, why? Definitely. As Gerald said, we're at the, um, the gathering event, you know, which is hosted uh, by Davinas and, you know, Alalon and Anna. You know, we are, you know, passionate about working with Davinas and the Didi Hair Mist is a great cutting lotion, yeah? It's almost like, um, you know, it's, it's as light as water, you know, but it just allows the comb just to come through a little bit easier, you know, it's just a nice, so, and you're not going to feel it if you're going to apply other products before you blow dry, you know, you're not really kind of worried about overloading the hair, you know, so it's a great light cutting, cutting agent. A lot of people are very excited about what the look's going to look like. Our, our friend Nicole is said she's explaining to her husband, who probably is an hairdresser, how cool it's going to look. And yes, Nicole, I think it would look great with a razor too. You know, my, my feeling. That's, that we love scissor cutting, but we also love razor cutting. And mixing those two together for me is great. Now, you um, you don't do any razor cutting, do you? No, but I'm curious. Do yeah. You know, I'd like you to teach me one day. Well, you know what? I'm gonna, why don't we set something up in London where I'll come out and I'll offer a class yeah, and you guys good. can host it. Why not? Yeah. I've always Shameless <laughs> self-promotion. It's the only way you get ahead. Yeah, we'll do a little scissor versus razor and I've always, I've always been interested in it. And yeah. I've watched you on um, you know, a few of the videos do it and it looks, you know, it looks really elegant. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a really beautiful tool. Are you sure that was me you were watching? No, usually elegant and Gerard, those two words go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but then now there are a lot of questions about your scissor, the shear that you're working with, yes. the scissor that yes. you're working with. We won't get into the debate of scissor versus shear. I'll use both words, hyphen, scissor, shear. Uh, but tell us a little bit about your scissor, or your shearsers is what I've been calling them. Um, so, at Alalon, we're very passionate about precision cutting. So obviously, we spent a long time in design of our own scissor. Um, the weight was really important, the tips were really important, um, the size was really important, and obviously, without being anything said, the quality of it is really important. So, we spent a good five years designing um, our scissor, and we're at a point now where we're really, you know, we're really happy with it, really satisfied with it, um, and also we're going to start to kind of potentially produce other models as well, you know, because it isn't an easy process, you know, it's, you know a lot of people you know, just kind of, you know, think, okay, you make your own scissor, but it does, you know, the backwards and forwards from production and, you know, getting it right and being satis satisfied and waiting for the feedback as well. It's not, it's not, it's not easy. It's, it's a little hard to pick this up on camera because obviously we're just using a phone, but this is just so beautiful with the, with the DD mist in it, the way that it's sitting there. I think we could get some beautiful photos. The good thing is we've got Randy here doing some video and some photography too. I'm sure you can go on and dry it, but there's yes. something about a cut like this when it's wet, no, the way it just melts over the, the body and into those lengths. It's very kind of um, uh, aquatic in a way, you yes. know? Like, yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I'm just yeah. using the, the blow dry primer uh, from uh, Your Hair Assistant, uh, designed and created by Angelo Seminara. Um, so that's just going to give me a little bit more hold, and then I'm using a bit of oil oil as well, just to kind of, you know, Anna Louisa's hair is just a little bit thirsty, I would say. Everybody's thirsty, we're in Palm Springs. <laughs> it's 100 train. All you do is drink and pee, drink and pee, drink and pee. Pedro, there was a question I about... Her, I asked her to go and wash her hair and come back, and she came back. It was dry. Her hair was dry. <laughs> that was like a two-minute walk. <laughs> Did you see a question coming in, Cal? Uh, we did, um, from Shelby, about over-directing the hair uh, to the middle. Is that how so you took those sections? Panel, were you over-directing everything kind of to one point? 
point, or was it to the previous? Um, I was tracking in a little bit. So uh, one was cut, one was one moved to two, two moved to three, and then I started uh, traveling. So four to three, five to three, six to three. Yeah. I like the way you say three. 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 What? What? Uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, you're going to start to blow dry. I'm sure you'll tell us about that. Yeah. But where did you grow up? And you know, where, where are you from? Pedro. Uh, I don't think that you're a Latin, are you? And Chico's not, you're not Spanish, no. but you've got a Spanish first name. I've got a Spanish first name yeah. and a Ukrainian surname. Okay, okay. But I don't speak Ukrainian or Spanish. Yeah, and you're, and you're born and raised in England. But when I drink vodka, I don't get drunk. Ah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my parents are actually Greek. You know, so I was grew up in a Greek community. A Greek community. Yeah. 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 So we got a super powerful blow dryer here. This is uh, Joseph DiMaggio's blow dryer. Come and tell us a little bit about the dryer. <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, again, this is what's great. All these guys are so passionate about what they're doing. They're making their own tools. And Joseph, the blow dry man, made his own blow dryer. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I, um, before I started doing hair, I went to school for engineering. So when I came into the, the hair industry, you know, I would take apart all the tools and actually open them and seeing that the components weren't that great. And then I got some opportunities to start working with friends directly, and then I would go to Asia working in the factory to develop stuff, and I was like, you know what? Nothing is actually really true. You know, a lot of, there's a lot of marketing, unfortunately, that is actually not what it says it is. So, you know, I said, I, the, the hairdressing industry has done, made my dreams come true, so I kind of have to do this, because I don't know anyone else can. You know, you have a lot of people who go in and they have, you know, their own tool line. But they just go in and private label something, put their name on it, make it the color and logo. So you actually went over to Asia, you met with the different factories. Yeah. And you, you know, what are some of the features of the blow dryer that you wanted it to have? So the most important thing for I me... I mean, you got to sell me, because no. to me it's like a blow dryer is a blow dryer. So no. Well, sell, sell me. me. That's why he was telling me about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm selling. Yeah, sell me. Sell well, me. The first, most important thing for me is the balance of the blow dryer. Nine times out of ten, we're always hearing that hairstylists are complaining about how heavy a dryer is. Can I feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's really light. Yeah, it is light. And it's not that it's light. I can feel the balance. Yeah, it's it's, it's definitely balanced. Notice balance. Gerard did not take over the blow dryer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, this one I could do. Yeah, this is my speed. I can wrap it So the balance is the most important part. So we made sure that we built the dryer around the motor, not loaded the motor into the, the body, which throws the balance off. Um, the cord is the proper gauge cord. It's the longest cord in the world uh, on the market right now. It's called the, the longest cord in the world. <laughs> on a hair dryer. On yeah. a hair dryer. On a hair dryer. And it's the proper gauge. And then above and beyond that, the science and technology is actually real. The, yeah. most, the most negative ions you have on any dryer in the market is 10,000 per square second, which isn't a lot in the ionic world. We have 10 million. 10 million. Per square uh, second. Uh, the course, jack you're like a Dr. Evil oh, yeah. blow dryer. We <laughs> have 10 million. <laughs> so we have, yeah, this is a little enough. But here you can see the shine. Yeah, immediately that yeah. will help fill the cuticle. It cuts your drying time in less than half. You know what I mean? And the nozzle has been calibrated with the heat and wind speed ratio to dry the hair and fill the cuticle the faster. We can definitely tell it's powerful. It's got a lot of motor. Charles Ladner made a great joke. I feel like one of my, like you're one of my clients. I can't. I'm just making believe I can hear you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh yeah, that's great. Uh huh. Uh huh. We all know that moment. So yeah. sometimes a loud blow dryer actually it gives you a little break, right? You were talking to your client for 30, 40 minutes. You turn on the blow dryer, and then you don't have to talk. Yeah. But that that that's the power of it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's gonna you're gonna be done faster with this dryer. Specifically, you blow everything out to the water. And that's it. Well, you're sick, you're yeah, tell us again the name, yeah, because people out there are asking what's the, what's the name, where they find it. They can find it at suharipro.com. How do you spell that? S-H-U-H-A-R-I-P-R-O.com. Awesome, thank you. No problem, guys. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thanks, Joseph. All right, so tell us, now you're using, we see this a lot on HD Live. A lot of people don't do this type of blow drying, but a lot of our educators do. Tell us a bit about the choice of brush and why you're drying the way that you are. Great question, Gerald. As loud as you can. Great From question. The <laughs> um, a lot of the time when we're doing analog courses, one of the biggest problems that occur is that, that students find it very tricky to be able to wrap dry. It's just a tool that maybe is just not used enough globally. And I think it's 
Is it like any tool? Uh, 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 all along we have a, a philosophy that any tool in the wrong hand is dangerous, you know, and there's no such thing, you know, a round brush and a, and a vest brush equally as you can create beautiful things with, but it's just understanding how to use the tool. You know, so the tips that I could give you to be able to use the tool is to be to use the head shape and also to try and get dexterity in both hands. Yeah? Don't over use one hand. Use both hands equally. Left, right, left, left right. Left, right, left, right. right. The body too. One, one hand should, should shape, the hand with the hair dryer should shape, and the other one should wrap. Okay, so then when you change hands, you have to teach your brain to be able to do the opposite movement. So now this hand is shaking and the other hand's wrapping. You know, so it's a really important skill, you know, and also the direction of the, the hair dryer, the heat, you know, is key. You know, you've got to make sure that you're closing the cuticle, the hair's working down the hair dryer, you're not creating any artificial movement with the, with the roots. You know, you're trying to collapse the roots to be able to, to work position and cutting afterwards. You know, my objective is to be able to see all of the imperfections in the haircut. I want to see it. You know, I want to see the problems that I've created. I want to see if there's a weight line. I want to see if there's a mistake. You know, and this technique will give me that. It will show off everything. I tell you, we have the best fans and the best followers in the world. So much love coming in for this to say how beautiful Ana Luisa is, how flawless your technique is, and how much you're loving the hair type. So, we couldn't do any of this without you guys. That love is very reciprocal, and uh, thank you. Again, if you're really enjoying it, hit the share button, show that love out there so all your hairdresser friends can also check it out. And remember that these videos, they stay live, um, they stay stored on our video section. Um, you can go back and watch them at any time. You can fast forward them and rewind them. And you can even continue to post questions. If you tag Alan or Pedro, they'll get a notification. You can also tag me. I'll do my best. I know a little bit about hair cutting. I'll do my best to answer. All right, guys. So again, uh, drying it up a bit here. And um, we're looking for questions. So anybody that has any questions here, again, lots of love. All of our friends are, are still hanging out. James Alva, who we're missing here at the gathering. Hey, James, we wish you were here. Hi, James. Yeah. He's loving it. So James in the movement. Yes. Yes, James. Lots of love coming in. Okay, so I'm just going to change my technique now to a tension drying technique, okay? So I was using a wrap drying technique, which my focus was the root. Now my focus is the mid length and the end. Alright, so I want to ensure that I close that cuticle. Alright, here's one that comes up a lot, alright? Obviously, Hairbrain has a lot of Sassoon educators and former Sassoon educators, and they almost always take the nozzle off when they blow dry. And I you didn't even take the nozzle off. Why not? Um, <laughs> You've been turned to the dark side. Um, I often, again, it's about choices, isn't it? I believe to say always or never is a very dangerous road to go down. I agree. I say that all the time. So, for me, if it, if it works in this scenario, then you should embrace it. And I'm, I'm also just for, you know, testing out, you know, goes in the hair dryer, seeing, yeah. seeing what it's like. But, you know, it's, again, it shows the passion because, <laughs> you know, if someone, if you, if you kept saying scissors, 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 someone out there would be so passionate, you should say, Sheer, why are you doing that? Yeah. Or, oh, you took the nozzle off. Why did you take the nozzle off? Because we're so passionate. But don't confuse your passion with dogma. And when you think that there's an absolute right and wrong in an art, you're, you're hitting the end of the line. You always have to be open, and you always have to expect the disruption because the disruption is what moves you forward. So maybe for Pedro, blow drying with a nozzle will change something. You know, and I used the tension dryer without a nozzle as well. You know, I used to, for 15 years of my career, I never picked up a nozzle. I used to throw them away. That's not what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly used to throw them away. And well, yeah, we used to do that at the academy. Yeah. People would come in because we were both teachers, and you'd take their nozzle off, and they'd be like, what are you doing? And, you know, you don't need that. Hanging it off. Yeah. yeah. All right, so again, lots of people are always joining. If you could give a recap of the cut as you're drawing, you can see this beautiful, it's quite modular. I'll let Pedro speak for himself because he does it so well. He's got all these different panels. Uh, that I, you know, or what I call zones. Right. I'm trying to learn the language. 
Tell us a little bit about the different zones. Okay, so with Annalise's hair, I wanted to create lots of different extremities of length. So some really short areas sitting alongside some really long areas. Some areas which were graduated, some which were a, a building up weight, and other areas which were removing. So I worked with one, two, three, four, five zones, and each of them zones I use a different technique. Alright, so this first this first zone through the side, I just use a layering technique, I work shorter internally, longer externally. Yay! Woo! All right, so we're back to a normal volume now. Let me turn down. <laughs> okay, so again, beautiful haircut. For those of you just joining us, we're in Palm Springs here, and uh, it's been an average of 115 degrees for the past three days. This is a four-day event called The Gathering, and Pedro uh, is here from London. He's been heading up the teaching of the haircutting portion, and uh, he looks like he's getting in here to do some refining and some finishing work. So tell us uh, what the haps is. I just want to... She's got amazing eyes and cheekbones, so I'm just going to start to highlight them. And I'm highlighting them by just popping in just a little shape there. Thank you, Jeremy. All right, and you see what that does? It just pops, pops the whole area just there. The eye, the cheekbone, it just comes out, comes alive. That, in a few weeks, might not be, look so pretty. Yeah, I'm worried about the longevity of that. So I like it, but I'm just going to take it in a little bit just to give it a little bit more life. It might grow wings and fly away in a few weeks. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of one of the things about being a, an experienced hairdresser is thinking about the longevity. It's not just the moment, is it? No, 100%. It's, you know, how well, especially if you're working, which I know you do, still in the salon. I know you're known for this very creative work, but you own a salon in the heart of London, and I'm sure you have a mix of clients from Mrs. Smith's, you know, four-week uh, graduation yeah, to my everything. favorites. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think... Uh, Understanding, again, it comes down to experience. I'm just going to pop this one in as well. So we'll look at that just there. It comes down to experience. So if I've seen a client six weeks ago and she comes back and an area is really kind of outgrown, you know, then I, I realise that my choice of length, my decision making, um, maybe was off. You know, it might have looked good for two weeks. And I communicate things to them. I'm like, so how long did that last? You know, what, what, at what point did that become irritating? You know, and they tell me, and then it kind of it makes me adjust. And that's how you learn. You know, that's how you learn with creativity and working with zones and disconnection. You know, you have to adapt. It's a bit like a, maybe a colorist. That's why, you know what? You know? I was just going to say that you took the words out of it's my mouth. It's kind of like they need to know what a color yeah. looks like six weeks later once it's faded. Yeah, and they need know? to ask a lot of questions and get more information. As sometimes we're, as cutters, we just go right to it, you yeah. know? And we just, do, we don't gather the information of how, how it worked. And I think, obviously, the market has changed. Clients are used to the colorists or people that do color or, or, or even you if you do both asking so many questions and having so many specialty products and things that I think as cutters we need to do the same. We have to be careful where it is. There we go. I think the other thing that colorists do really well is they help to plan. So for instance, when you, if we finish with this, if you did a color, you'd say, but I think, you know, for the spring, we're going to do this. And, you know, it, it entices the client to keep coming back and to know that you're thinking about them. And I think that's something we could do as cutters as well. When you're done with this, you could say to her, you know, this time it's, it's kind of long in the fringe or the bang, but next time, why don't, why don't we try to do something with a few undercut pieces, no, you know, to give that enticement. Okay, this is awesome. That is fan-freaking-tastic. That's what Laura Teal has to say. Again, we have the best fans and followers out there. Nothing but love coming in here for this beautiful shape, beautiful technique. Well, a couple of people aren't too thrilled about the lighting, but we're sorry. You know, we just pop up, we do this guerrilla style to bring you this great education. Um, and we're not in New York, we have a lighting kit, but I think you can still see it. Yeah, we haven't been in short of light this trip. No, we haven't. It actually feels good, right? <laughs> okay, so as you can see there, what I've done is just I've tried to, you know, choose a length which is going to work with the, the texture. You know, I haven't really over-dried the hair, you know, I've just allowed the hair to dry. So I'm looking at the bend. I'm trying to respond to the bend in the hair. Are you working a little bit more with bend these days? I, I know for a while, you know, a lot, especially these strong shapes and defined shapes, there's a lot of flat ironing. 
Are you working a little bit more, letting that hair happen? I'm not against flat ironing. Before you know it, you'll hand dry everything just like me. You didn't pick up a brush. You should have seen what I did today, Gerard. You'd yeah. have been proud. Yeah, because it's hear? hot up there, huh? You want to hear? We, we, put, we put our mannequins outside to air dry, and within 10 minutes, they were ready. I know. <laughs> and you're never going to get better hair than that, you know? Never. With great products and great placement and movement. That's awesome. No, it was. So again, for those of you that are just joining us, thanks for staying with us. We still have tons of people watching all the way through. This is such a crucial part, the refinement of a haircut like this. And I'm sure you have your own language and you can talk about that. But uh, just a refresher, we're here at the Palm Springs at the Ace Hotel at the Davines North America Gathering, The Gathering. It's where educators and salon owners from the Davines Network, people like Ana Luisa come together for great training and to kind of have a communal tribal thing. It's been a really beautiful experience. Trust me, Randy and I and Kelly have been to tons of these events and lots of them are wonderful, but there's definitely something special here. You, you really feel uh, like a family which I think is wonderful. We've really enjoyed it. Right, let's get back to the refining. So I'm working through each zone. One thing that you have to remember, yeah, when you're working with creative zones, yeah, you have to be able to make them merge and blend and complement one another. All right? And to do that, you need to call upon your techniques of personalizing and refining. And what I mean by personalizing and refining is pointing, slicing, chipping, weave cutting, surface cutting, all of these tools that you have in your locker to be able to you know, adjust and improve what you've done with your technique. And you do everything just with one scissor. You don't use any type of weight removal scissors or thinning scissors. Well, I think one day scissors. I'm going to use a razor on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that, that would be, I would love to share it with you. It would be, uh, it'd be an honor. Here's a great comment from Michelle Holman. Oh my God, this brings back memories of hair school back in 1989. I was a model for Vidal Sassoon, stylist from London. He gave me incredible, really short fringe. So. You sure it wasn't me? Yeah, yeah. Was it me? No, <laughs> I don't think so. No, actually, that's a bit, that's a bit yeah. Yeah. I started in 96. But you know, again, as hairdressers, and just since you brought it up, Michelle, you know, I, we obviously travel and we see hundreds, if not thousands of hairdressers. And sometimes they're the most conservative, long hair, extensions, you know, just really, really basic. And I think that's fine, but you know, we have to set the example. They, then they complain that they don't get to do fun work, they're not inspired. You know, don't you think people are gonna stop at Louisa and say, wow, that's an amazing haircut, and she's gonna say, here's my card. You know, this is good, this is a business builder, without a doubt. All right, back to the technique, enough of my preaching. Okay, so I want to just remove some of this the shorter the hair goes, naturally the thicker it becomes, all right? And the reason for that is because obviously the growth of the hair. The hair's at different stages of growth, so the shorter it comes, the more hair's sitting on the line. So them areas which are shorter generally need to be emptied and the density needs to be adjusted. So I'm just using a pointing technique to be able to adjust the density and just to enable that short layered area just to sit a little bit flatter. So it's just, obviously, the, the tricky thing when you're working with these techniques is finding your zones. You know, you have to re-go through it and find it. All right? Yeah, that's a question that always comes up too. So she comes back six, seven weeks later, mm. you know, uh, how do you, how do you recut this? How do you trim it? Um, I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this kind of, this kind of client, I would say, maybe wouldn't want to replicate, you know? Or if they did, you know, that would, be told from early days that it's impossible for me to recreate the exact style. You know, I think if I cut Anna, Anna Louise's hair again, I think it would be better. Yeah. You know, if I re try to replicate it, because I would understand her hair more. You know, I'll understand what reacts. You know, what what worked, what didn't work. Yeah. You know, and then I'll be able to respond accordingly. That would that would definitely be the goal. But I think you know a lot of people have the opposite, like that they. The second haircut's never as good as the first, you know? Um, I think because they're too stressed out about trying to make it the same haircut. Yes. <laughs> so I think of the great advice is to say, what worked? What did you love? Yeah. Show me improve it. And then don't try to replicate the technique. Yeah. Just redesign it and have that same passion that time instead of being like, how did I do it last time? I want to do it exactly the same. No, I agree 100%. And also, I don't want a clientele that want to have the same haircut over and over again. You know? Yes, that is all, isn't always feasible, but you know, you want to stay stimulated, don't you? You know, as, a, as an artist, you want to kind of, you have you know, to. Yeah, if you're going to do this, you know, I mean, most of us, once you're five or 10 years in, then you're probably going to be good for, for 30 years, mm. you know? So 
you gotta, gotta stay stimulated and that's why you have to not get dogmatic about anything. Be open to try things and judge things by the end result. I think that's also a great thing. But I think your clientele is, as everyone knows, is a reflection of you. You know, so my clients aren't gonna give me a hard time if I, you know, if they're not gonna ask for me to replicate things more often than not. Very true. They say they, they get a certain respect for you, you've established it. Okay, so now you're going through everything that you've cut um, and tell us a little bit about the angle of the scissor because I think that makes a big difference here to the end result. Oh, definitely. So I want to be parallel with the hair. I don't want to change what I've created. You know, I don't want to change the technique. Do you call this parallel point cutting or do you have a different um, a Good question, yeah. uh, Joan. I, I, we call it pointing, right. you know, but um, we've never called it parallel pointing. Right, because there's a difference if the scissor goes on a diagonal, oh, yeah, you're, you're really, going to recut the whole yeah, you're haircut. Really length. And you're going to make a very shattered haircut and you've exactly. done a very technical clean. Like this isn't making the haircut, uh, it's making it actually cleaner in a way. That's the, the thing. It's actually making it more complementary to yeah. each zone. Each zone actually will merge to the other more naturally. Where if you keep them solid, you know, they almost sit independently. You know, and the haircut becomes lots of haircuts on one head in five yeah. zones. Which you don't want. No, I and want, you see that I a lot. Them I mean, merge. honestly, like you know, we see we're so uh, flooded with imagery. We see thousands of pictures every day, and lots of times I'll see things that are quite creative, but they do look like five haircuts on one head. Exactly. And it's like trying to get that to homogenize a little bit, kind of it, in. Nice work. It, sometimes it's that extra I'm twenty-five sure. minutes or ten minutes or two minutes of point cutting. Okay. Really. Let me show you a little trick with the. Hair clippers can also help if you just turn yourself a little bit Okay, so you see where the texture's reacting there? You see that little, I don't know if you can see that on camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a surface cutting technique just to polish the hair. All right, this is a great technique to use. It's an old barber technique, you know, when the, the hair was a little bit kind of coarser. Yeah. They used to do it with a Half candle. Half textures, beard, you know, burning a like candle, that. you know, yeah. it's just a, it's a nice, Technique. So we we use it in a way we can use it with scissors, you know. But this for the interest of time, the clipper is much. Yeah, it's almost like chiseling a surface with exactly. scissor. Yeah. It's like you're. I love this kind of work because it's almost like you're sculpting. Hey, you know? Jasmine just joined us. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, Jasmine. Jasmine's had kind of haircuts like this over the year. Jasmine's what was one of my stylists when I owned a salon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Super creative girl. Thanks for joining in, Jasmine. Right, so I think we're getting close to the finish here. So this is the question that usually comes up. How do you know when you're done? You know, when you're doing something creative, how do you know? You're never done. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever think you're done? I think you have to walk away at some point. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, for me personally, since my philosophy has evolved in a different way, mm -hmm. I always kind of try to stop myself. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I, for me, I found five minutes underdone is better than 10 minutes overdone. Yeah. Like that's, so I kind of like, when I think I need to do just a little more, I kind of stop. I think when my eye starts to like it, um, you know, that's when I know I'm close. You know, like when my eye starts, starts telling me, yes, 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 good, good, good. You know, but then I think you have to just kind of get to a point where you say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I think we have a local here, Richard Carrasco. Welcome to the desert, guys. Hope the desert heat is treating you guys right. Big fan of Pedro and team. Richard, it's been an average of 115 degrees here. Yeah, it's not been. It's not yeah, been we had 121 yesterday. Yeah, and well, from what I understand, the hottest day in history is 131. So we're, we're close. close. <laughs> yeah, at least here in the states. <laughs> okay, nearly there, guys. Uh, any any advice on what type of trimmer works best for this? Um, well, these actually were recommended to me by a good friend of mine, uh, Josh Lamonica. Oh uh, yeah, so. Another. Uh, veteran of HD Live yes. and incredible barber. I mean, it's just incredible human being, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so he um, actually gave it to Johnny, my business partner, as a gift. Awesome. <laughs> and I saw them, and I I got like a little Abington veil <laughs> thing going <laughs> on. Yeah. It looks amazing. Okay, I can't so, help but touch hair. So with this, what I'm going to do is just going to work with a weaving technique. All right, so Kelly, you got me. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just going to work through. Oh, George Roundy is watching. Oh, welcome, George. George Roundy, our good friend George Roundy. Wink, wink. They might be making it their way to Avalon uh, in September, I heard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get some good friends it's coming your way. It's a pseudonym, but our good friend George Roundy is coming to take a class with you guys. That's oh, really? not his real name. What's his real name? I can't say. We'll yeah. tell you, we'll tell you off camera. He's on Facebook because, you know, he doesn't want any stalkers. Which, um, which day is he you got a great, You got a great team coming in. 
thing on my mind here. Michelle Holman just wanted to say before before you go, Pedro, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. Oh, okay. Na uh, Nanette, uh, beautiful work, and thanks for helping Nanette with the test. I was testing the connection before, and Nanette gave us great feedback. Um, I'm going to leave it with you, Pedro, now, and you tell us your final thoughts here. Yeah, just last zone, just coming through this last triangle. That was my first zone that I put in. And all I want to do is just loosen that up a little bit, just so it swings from left to right a little bit more. So just using a pointing technique, just to release the hair. And then I'm just going to just quickly put, comb the head to the left and then comb the head to the right and see how each side looks. And then we're pretty much done. But I, I hope, you know, as a company, we love, you know, to influence people's language. You know, that is a big thing about what Avalon stands for. You know, and we really want to empower people, empower hairdressers, you know, to feel like they've got that control, you know, and to do that, you know, we, we really want to make a, a difference, you know, so doing... Well, you guys definitely are making a difference. Doing work like this. Yeah, just even in the past couple of years, you know, and I think the positivity that you put out there shows. And it's nice, yeah. it's nice when the good guys are winning. You know, which doesn't always happen, it, you know, even in the, in the beauty industry, sometimes people have to be manipulative mm. or really aggressive to get successful, but you guys are a great example of people that are kind of following a nice path, nice, talented people. Yeah, we deserve everything we get. Lots of love coming in. Everybody loves you. Are you married? <laughs> I think there are a lot of people out there that want to, uh, both male and female, so whatever you're talking about. You got, you got them all. Guys, it's not Tinder. If you straight, it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work that way. Incredible. You know, again, I'm seeing lots of um, lots of different pieces coming together. I see the Havington, the veil. I see a little kind of bias cutting on the top. Incredible, beautiful work, Pedro. Again, I'll let you sum it up, and uh, we'll get a final recap here on this look for everyone joining. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Again, we're here at The Gathering, which is a Davines North America education team event. We've had over 200 yeah. educators from all over North America come together. Uh, Pedro here was heading up the cutting training for them. They were also doing uh, leadership training with Christine Zielinski. They were doing styling with Joseph DiMaggio and doing color with a huge team. Who was leading the color team exactly? It was a Francesco. Francesco Ferry was leading the color team. Um, and here we go, beautiful look on Ana Luisa. Final words, Pedro. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of tease all these longer pieces, just make it look a little bit more editorial, just a little bit more fun. You know, but she's beautiful, so I didn't know really what I did. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you've got a good model with good hair, you know, you're probably 80% of the way there. Agreed? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, but it's got a lot of influence. Well, tomorrow you have to cut my hair, so we're going to put it to the test. Oh, uh, yeah? I'm going to Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See how big you really are. Can you stand up for us? There you are. Hope you like it, guys. Lots of different lengths, lots of different choices. You know, lots of fun. Thank you, Pedro. Thank yeah. you, Ana Luisa. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, Davin, North America. This is a great event. A wonderful week here in Los Angeles. And thank you all for watching. Thanks for your positivity and support. Peace out. Woohoo! Oh, thank you.